Hi, I'm Mike Lansman and welcome to another video tutorial. This illustrated tutorial will demonstrate how to draw a rosette. A rosette is simply a winner's badge at a sporting event with a ribbon. And if you're still confused, stay tuned. And we're just going to use the simple shape tools in Adobe Illustrator to create our effect. Let's go and create a new document. Go from the file menu, we invoke the new command, which will allow us to specify the requirements of our final product. We require this one to be for screen delivery at 72 pixels per inch in the RGB color space. That is why I have selected the web profile from these presets. One could now go and individually change the width and the height of your document. But I have selected the preset of 960 by 560 and we say OK. Document being created, it is now time to go and draw our rosette. Now the first tool that we're going to use is the polygon tool. We know that the polygon tool resides within the rectangle tool menu. Common to all the Adobe products, where you find there's a little white triangle that implies that if I click and hold on a tool that has a white triangle, it expands the menu to show me the other tools that are in that menu. I'm going to select the Polygon tool and starting off more or less in the center, I'm going to draw a polygon. Please, it is very important to note, in fact, it is essential that you now keep holding down on the mouse because otherwise we cannot transform the shape of this polygon. So we draw out our polygon and while holding the mouse, we use the up arrow key on the keyboard to add sides to the polygon and the down arrow key will subtract sides. So we're increasing the sides. It seems to be good. We can now resize it Hold the shift key to constrain it to a perfect proportion. Let go the mouse first and then let go the shift key. We would like to assign a fill color to the inside of the shape. Click back on the black selection tool. From the icon in the control panel, the fill icon, we click on a fill color. This will fill the inside of the shape or the path that we've just created. Clicking off the shape to deselect it, we now notice that there is a stroke. What we've just created is a shape, yes, but it is also a path. The outside of the path is the stroke, the inside is the fill. So what we will need to do now is to remove that stroke. We can achieve that by Black Selection Tool, selecting the object and from the Stroke icon in the Control Panel, select None. You will now notice the stroke has disappeared. Deselect it, all good. Moving it up a little bit, we're ready to add the next component. The next component that we require for this rosette is a circle, but a circle drawn in the correct proportions and in alignment relative to the center of this polygon. Illustrator provides us with a wonderful smart guide system that alerts us when we're in the center and accompanying shortcuts or modifier keys that allow us to achieve this task. Now the ellipse tool is located within the polygon tool menu I select the ellipse tool and a really good way is to to find the center is to move the cursor around where you estimate the center to be and you immediately notice that X when I move the cursor over the X it alerts me that I am in fact in the center of that new shape now it doesn't help us just to draw a shape out of there even if it is constrained because it's not in the center so what we will do is locate the center and the modify key to use here is the Alt key. You will notice while you hold the Alt or the Option key, the cursor will change shape. 
that implies we are going to be drawing from the center outward and to constrain it to a perfect circle we hold the shift key at the same time. We're now going to draw our inner circle. Be sure to let go of the mouse first and then let go of the alt and the shift keys so that we constrain the proportions. We use the black selection tool to ensure that that is selected and from the stroke icon in the control panel we will go and select a white stroke. Now you may feel that that may not be a heavy enough point size as a stroke, you may want to increase its weight. Clicking on the newly generated circle, in the control panel, we simply highlight its point weight and we can use the up or the down arrow keys to manipulate its size. All good. Now we would like to create the ribbon for this rosette. Yet again, another tool that lives in the same menu, we are going to select the Rectangle tool. Draw a rectangle that would approximate the dimensions of the ribbon. And you will notice that this version that I'm using is Illustrator Creative Cloud 2014. And indeed, it is very smart because once I've drawn the shape, it automatically opens up the Transform panel to allow me to transform without having to go and manually locate and invoke the transform panel. I don't need it right now. I'm going to close it and I use the black selection tool to ensure that this newly created shape is selected. I'm going to remove the stroke from the shape, from the control panel. I click on the arrow for the stroke color and I would select none and from the fill color option I choose red. Good. Now I would require this triangular shape that you see at the bottom of the rosette ribbon. How would I do this? Well I would need an anchor point to be present that I can manipulate the shape to transform it into that triangular shape but there are no anchor points at the bottom of this path. So I would need to add one in order to manipulate it into the shape that I require. Adding of anchor points is very simple. We head over to the pen tool menu and we select the add anchor point tool. We need, we need to be on the path, not off the path. Off the path gives us an error. We need to be on the path or a path segment to click to add, anchor point being added. Now we do not use the black selection tool, but in fact for this exercise we use the white selection tool. And the white selection tool is able to edit an anchor point. Selecting this anchor point, draw a little marquee around the area where you've created the new anchor point and we drag in an upward direction to manipulate the newly created anchor point that we've just created. Now what we're missing here is that it is in front of and not behind so we simply need to change the stacking order. We can change the stacking order by right clicking. We go to the arrange menu and although you're not seeing it on this screen we select the send to back option. I also want to make sure we, by using the smart guides that I am in the center of the shape. In order to recreate a bit of a dimension to this rosette, it would be a good idea to add a drop shadow. Clicking on the polygon, we'll go under the effects menu and select stylize drop shadow. We're not seeing any of the drop shadow right now merely because preview is not ticked by default. Ticking on preview shows us this hectic 
top shadow. It's at 75%. Now, there are very useful techniques and ways that we can change this opacity very quickly and very simply. Clicking on the word opacity, you will notice highlights the amount. I can now use the down arrow key that will manipulate or the up arrow key that manipulates this percentage one percentage at a time but holding the shift key and the down arrow manipulates it by 10 percentage points every time I click up or down. I could then let go of the shift key and do it one pixel at a time again but a really efficient method of editing it in context and using the modifier keys. Another addition we can make right now is to include some type. I will click on the type tool and I will click to add point type and I will type in the word winner. We know that a very fast efficient method of increasing or decreasing text size would be to press the escape key shift command and the greater than key will make it larger and the less than key while holding the modifier keys reduces its size. I can now position it in place and from the fill color option in the control panel select the white color. One very efficient way of selecting this text and deciding on what font you would like to use would be simply to ensure that your text frame is selected and from the control panel as long as you're in as long as you're in having it selected from the control panel highlight the font family's name and we simply use the up and the down arrow keys that will show us in context how this type will look. Very difficult to try and select from a pull down menu and to say, oh, that's how that'll look. Much easier to do it in context. I might want to increase the size a little bit, use the black selection tool, move it in place. And there we have a rosette. The final step that we may want to take these are all individual elements right now. And if we move them, we stand the risk of separating all these individual graphic elements. So using the black selection tool, we would select all of these elements by drawing a marquee around them. And from the object menu, invoke the group command or command plus G or control G on a Windows computer. This graphic is now grouped and whenever you move one will move them all. I hope you found this to be a very interesting design tutorial on how we can manipulate basic shapes into a rosette. And now you have an understanding of what a rosette is. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.